First of all, I had gotten my hair cut. Because the film got pushed and pushed and pushed, and I got another job, and I had to get a haircut. So they had to put a wig on me. I was three hours in hair and makeup, and they did like the thing, and the Jesus, and the crown of thorns, and it looked amazing. And I came, out, I came into that church, and Abel took one look at it, and went, he looks like Brooke fucking Shields just got out of the shower. This guy's been carrying a cross for fucking three hours. And, and so, you know, and the other thing was, Abel got so, so they messed me up, came back, got a fruit. And uh, Abel said, go upstairs, keep this priest busy, because he hasn't seen what we did to the altar. <laughs> no, I said the opposite. I said, don't leave your trail. I said, he said, I got them all done in Jesus Christ. Right? Excuse me. Yeah. That's the Okay. We had the whole production, and right? So this is our first Jesus movie. You know, we grew up Catholic, the whole fucking, that was actually the church I got baptized in. That woman, when she got that, that church, where those kids were going to the Bronx, that's where I went to school, you know. So, um, like, you gotta get the Jesus shit by, you know, if you're coming from one country. So I told the design problem, I said, listen guys, I'll do, I'm gonna do everything. I'll do everything, get the Jesus shit right. Get the fucking crucifix, get this guy right, get the whole thing. Right? He cuts his hair, he looked like Jesus, right? So he got the job, and then he looks like that. <laughs> so that put him and I let my broke shields. Okay, so they get him set up as, as Jesus. In the church, they don't really know what the fuck is going on. I'm saving him for like the last shot, not to get thrown out. So the craft service is down in the cell, and I say, stay in the fucking trail. Don't come out to a shoot. I get down to craft service. He's sitting there. Dressed like Jesus Christ, blood all over him, smoking a cigarette with the Monsignor of the fucking church. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, 
Well, my senior in that church got sent to fucking Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and Harvey, I mean, he just, he brought it. I mean, what was, what was, we're working with what Harvey. Was what? what was what? I mean, what was that experience like? What I mean, he, like, every what? scene, he, he what? With Harvey? Yeah. You know, we talked about the other day, man. It's like, okay, I'm a Buddhist, right? Or an, you don't have to be Buddhist. The point is, you could read it, you could get the teaching. You got to get it from the teacher. You did. In, in, in the practice I got, the guy's got to be right with you. That's like when you read the Bible and stuff. From him to Job to Sam to blah, blah, blah. What they're trying to explain is, that's handed down from me to you like that. You did. You got to be there. You can watch Mean Streets 100 times. You ain't gonna fucking get it, you dig? You need him to. Okay, we didn't know him from Adam. He showed up, and then we got him, you dig? He was the teacher. Now we got him. That's that act. You know, that's that thing. That's, that's Bobby, and that's Al, and that's, that's, you know. But you gotta get it from the guy. And like walking in, um, was walking a little bit different than Harvey, so. <coughs> But both of them were so humble and so giving. And I mean, the first thing Harvey said to me when he go, I didn't know from shit, you know, but these guys are like, believe me, we're making this movie. It's me even walking, it's like, you know, it's like Mount Rushmore time for me. You dig what I mean? It's like, I know who this fucking guy is. And um, the first thing he said to me, he says, you know, I can learn a lot from you guys. Right? I said, whoa. You know what I mean? I mean, that was the deal. And he also said, you can learn a lot from me. <laughs> I learned a lot more from him, believe me, than he did from me. All right, we're going to start taking some yeah, questions. Okay, guys, we've got this, we're doing a documentary. Where's, where's our cameras? Everybody's, everybody's in the same spot. Get the fuck out there. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. This is Steffi, she's directing me. <laughs> and she said, she knows what she's doing. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just get some time to this guy. <laughs> you don't have to be there, I mean, find us. <laughs> you know, all, you know, uh, all right, we're going to you. Did, did, you, get, did you get that direction? Rake all these motherfuckers. <laughs> Improvisation is when you're writing a scene. And then, then when you're rewriting, that's the second improvisation. And then when he does it, it's an improvisation on the improvisation, you know? So it's not like, do I like it? I like it when it fucking is great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. do I like it? They fucking gonna spin it and play it fucking awesome. You know what I mean? If we're gonna work the thing, you know, RB again, this is like, these guys taught us like really how to rehearse, you know what I mean? They never do a scene. You know, I, I, had, I had a great opportunity working with Pacino. I was going to be the director of Carlito's Way. Yeah, and then I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know when I got fired? Because I took a bottle of wine off the table of the head of Universal and put it under my coat. <laughs> 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 because, because when you drink alcohol in New York, you're not allowed to have it in the street. So it was at the Con Film Festival. And I just did it so naturally. <laughs> anyway, whatever. I was probably, probably going to get fired anyway. But the thing is, with, with like out, with them, you're never going to do the scene. Okay, so whatever rehearsal you're talking about, you can fucking skip it. Okay, because they're never going to say those words. They, they're going to do uh, Penny Allen, right? You know, yeah. they, they, they would work exercises on the thing. That shit, right? <laughs> That's an exercise. Here, uh, you know, to, I don't know if I'm, I'm supposed to say this, explain this. It's like I would a rabbit comes out of the hat, but <laughs> hey, you're all nice guys. And this guy's done such a good job. And um, um, 
You're doing an exercise to get ready for a scene. Okay? The exercise is how he's five years old. He's on Coney Island. It's really hot. He wants to go home. His mother won't take him home. He's got sand in his bathing suit. All right? And he's just warming up to do something that has absolutely nothing to do with it. You dig? It's an exercise. Anyway, he's doing this, and I'm with Joseph. I said, what the fuck are you doing with this? Like, you, know, <laughs> you know? And then, you know, and he's calling me. Fine, stand up and make it back to the camera. I'm big boy, you know? <laughs> I would add to the thing about improv. I've been made a bunch of movies with Abel. This was not on this one, but on Welcome to New York. Uh, we're doing the scene with Deborah Du, the party scene. And it opened with me coming out and saying some dialogue. And I kept, we, I think it was like the third take. And I came out again and I said the thing as I came out and cut, hip, if you say one more word from that script, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as improv goes, he does encourage improvisation. <laughs> you say one more word from that script. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, let me uh, At what point in my life? Uh, <laughs> at this exact moment in my life. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, okay. In this exact moment in my life. What was your relationship with drugs? And how did you inform the name of that? What, now, Lieutenant? We were as fucked up as he is in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. I mean, no, I mean, it's a sad story. You know, I mean, I've been sober for 10 years, but. You know, I got it fucking great. Right. <laughs> he's smart, I'm stupid. <laughs> anyway, um, it's like a documentary. You know what I mean? Sometimes I watch this, this is like, what is this, a how-to to get fucking high? I mean, <laughs> you see the way we're moving on. She's got the music, she's put, you know, I mean, this is how you read this ain't the bullshit. You know what I mean? And the blood rush is with the needle. You know what I mean? Some expensive songs being played. Like, <laughs> Harvey's not getting high in this movie. You dig? But it's just Zoe's getting high. <laughs> uh, you can see, you, know, you can't act that. She's a great actress, but you can't act that. It was her birthday. <laughs> that was the last shot of the movie. I think this, this chick's going to kill herself. You know? you know. Great just. <laughs> the origin of what? The film. Of this film or my film in general? Well, in general, it's a tough one. This is easy. This happened. It was an event where the nuns got raped. This was like a big, this was like the welcome to New York. Definitely, you know, um, Strauss Kahn. Who's going to be the president of France? Where he was uh, like a maid in a hotel. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, like this is like, you know, New York folks. You live in New York. It's like you're reading about this for a month. You know, when the nuns got raped in uh, Spanish Harlem, man, that was like, he did. So this was many years later. You know, so that was like the starting point. The idea of the gambling like that. You know, that doubling down. You know, that addiction to the fucking, you know, going after it and, you know, all that. And then Zoe, you know, we wrote the script. All right. Okay, we need a woman with drilling <coughs> Okay. Come on, girls, yo. <laughs> Come on, here we go, right here. Yeah. <laughs> so, that one I can't. I don't have to. I don't know why, but you become fucked up and obsessed with it. Right there. Have you forgiven your father? Yeah, I'm cool with my father. I was always cool with my father. My father was like one of these loving, very caring, you know. Uh, you know, these guys were Neapolitan. They were from the Depression. They were like. Gangsters, they were like, it, like if you, if you know Neapolitan, it was like Hurricane Katrina rolled in and never rolled out. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But my own big thing is, hey, let's chill, man. Let's be cool. Like if I say to him, the biggest compliment I could pay about someone is, he's cool. You think we could be cool? My own man, being cool, that was part of me. You know, being cool is a drag. <laughs> I understand. Being cool is a drag. Not being in conflict, not being under siege, not being, you know, gamble you on a fucking game. Hey, I sold you gamble 50. Gamble with your house and your kids. Okay? <laughs> now you get charge. You know what I mean? And when you got that, then that's something. You know what I mean? I never had to, to, to um, because I love him so much because he, he had, it's like that double cross. He had that so much love. And, but he was battling a alcohol addiction, and he was back then, it would take my like perfect day. You know, there were barbiturates, but it was basically drunk. You know, they were, you know. And, but they were hardcore guys, because they worked, they drank hard, but worked hard, and, yeah, it's complicated, you know. But I got no problem. Yeah, who's got, who's, nope. who knows they got a little bit closer? <laughs> 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 We're not leaving till we answer every question. <laughs> 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 Last night I could have had those people in my hotel room. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, I don't get it. These films have to be four years old until people watch them. But we were talking about the music. No, what was it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's, it's, yeah, it's the magic of the fucking thing. Man. You know, and then we're playing here tomorrow. Right? Yeah, right here. We're going to play here at 7 That's going to be fun. Yeah, what's fun about working with Abe was sometimes I'll do the movie, acting in the film, and then we'll end up hanging. And the first song that I ever had published, because I have two lives, one as a musician, one as an actor, was for China Girl, a film we did in like 1987. And then uh, since then, been doing that, I get a song in, Abe writes unbelievable songs. And so he'll put songs in, and of course Joe D'Elia, who scored all the movies, going way back to, I think, the first one, right, Nine Lives? But, uh, and so we have a little band 
together, uh, and we're doing uh, songs from the movies and some new songs and stuff. And uh, and so Abel's always been kind of you know the sort of you know, rock and roll director, but musical in his vision for this stuff anyway, you know. Uh, and so and and we're playing here tomorrow night. So come on out and yeah, see us play. Yeah, don't miss that. Whatever you do. <laughs> that was a yeah, don't go to see any of the new movies, but watch us fucking play. <laughs> we'll play new songs. You can leave during them and come back for the old songs. No, I go to do this in Europe, right? You know, I live in Europe, so I go to all these places. So the ticket is, they show me movies, but I got to play. Because somehow I got myself, I don't know how I got myself in this game, right? As a play, okay? So... I'm playing, I get to the bar. These guys are up there. So I'm on my own with whoever the fuck is there. And I'm at a bar trying to entertain the bar. But the bar has like 600 people. All, you know, you're a genius, you're great, you're good. Pat me on the back, kiss me, listen to me fucking. It's a sad sometimes. And across the street, my movie's playing. The movie made by this genius, and there's like 13 people. <laughs> And I get paid to play. I don't get paid for it. I only get paid if I make a fool out of myself and I fucking fall. I think with Joey, you know, he's jamming when he's on the dailies. Joey's playing. We're playing music. We're, you know, it's to get that fucking thing. You know, you put that song up there. Probably like, who knows if it's going to work. You put it up there, it's fucking magic. Schooly, fucking magic. You know what I mean? It's like, holy shit. And it's like, you know, it's like finding gold. You know, it's not something I can never figure it out. I've been doing it for 50 years. I can't figure it out. You never know what it is that's going to make it. You know, you just got to keep hammering away at it. But you know when, it's, when it works. You know. You know it, didn't, didn't this come out of a song? I mean, the way that I tell this story, we, it, it will probably say I'm telling it all wrong, but he tells my stories wrong. But uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, we were hanging out one night and Abel had, you said, we were very late at night, three, four in the morning and doing all the things that the bad lieutenant did and, <laughs> and uh, playing guitar and hanging out. And he said, I got this new song. He started playing this riff and I started sort of Albert Kingin over top of it and, and uh, played the song, uh, The Bad Lieutenant. And then that was that. And then the song, this is the way I tell you, correct me wrong, but the song became the script. He and Zoe put the script and then the script became the movie. And then what you had on here was the end credit theme song was the original end credit theme song was School D. Because when that came out, they, they got sued and had to take it off. They got sued by Led Zeppelin. So when they came to Abel and said, what are you going to put in its place? Cut back to two years before when we were jamming all coked up with Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. He'd been recording with a little Sony Walkman cassette machine and he handed him that cassette and said, here's the song. So in a way, this movie came from a song. Yeah, in a way. In a way. All right, somebody in the back. Who's, who's got the question? We know someone's got the question. Yeah. All the way back, got the question? Yeah, yeah, I'm right. over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what would you like working with your head press? Oh, you, where's the head press crew? They're right here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are back there, yeah. right? You guys have made that other movie without us. <laughs> <laughs> You're not those guys, are you? <laughs> no, I mean, Ed. You know, there was him and I were making movies together. We had the idea he was for, okay? You know, with Ed, he ain't putting up no money, right? You know, whether he put up money for a script, I'm not I'm sure, you know what I mean? There was some money, but he was certainly not going to finance the movie, right? I was doing pretty good at the time. We were doing some big Hollywood shit, okay? My the woman I was married to was saying, don't come back to New York and do that fucking movie. All right, she just had it in her, her gut that this was not a good career choice. Because we were in LA and we were starting to roll. Pressman's wife said, don't make that fucking movie, All right? So we are going around trying to raise money. And finally after, but, and you know, no one got it. Anyway, the cop does coke. What, what is he, bus crack dealers? No, he is the crack dealer. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, you, you know what I mean? No one got it. We didn't get the first place. I remember the last time we were in Morton's. You know, you know, is Morton's still there? You guys know this? 
Okay, Morton's was a restaurant. Well, you went there on a Thursday. On Thursday, all the players went. You think this is the way Hollywood ran at that time. Okay, and you go here on a Thursday. And you go, Spago's on a Friday. And you, go, you know what I mean? <laughs> really. And I, I was like, you know, one of these knuckleheads doing that. <laughs> and it was at Morton's, and it was late, and he had these women, <laughs> these, these old Jewish chicks sitting there, and he's, he'd always be pushing me, going, they got money, go for it, get them, talk them into it, you know. And I'm sitting there, I mean, they're putting up the chairs on the table. You know, the bus boys, the waiters, they want to go fucking home. They look at me, and we're trying to hustle five old ladies. <laughs> and, you know, when everybody else had gone home, and that was like, I said, Ed, let's just drop this, bro. This is not going to happen. And he stepped up with the dough. Okay, a piece of it, enough of it. Okay, and um, so that's what, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stories, but he really stood up. And then the first day of shooting, listen to this, so now we're the first day of shooting. My wife, Nancy, has no idea we're making a movie. Okay, his wife has no idea we're making a movie. We're shooting that scene, he's on the telephone going, and the guy's robbing a thing across the street on Fifth Avenue. Who comes walking down the street? It's my old lady with the baby in the, in the carriage. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I swear to God. A half hour later, his wife, Annie, is walking down the street. She, he runs into that belly and hides behind the counter. <laughs> and she's screaming at me. You went to the movie! I said that to make this movie. We're going to buy a house in Montauk. <laughs> Lieutenant Port of Call in New Orleans, uh, the one that Herzog made. What's your relationship with that movie? Well, zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, zero, really. I mean, I, you know, we're, I, he's, you know we're, we're big fans of his, so I can't get too angry with Herzog. It was diplomatic, <laughs> man. What? That was great. You know, no, that's really what he because he, I don't want to say it for these guys, but he told me the whole story of how that was involved. But don't tell Harvey. I, I actually explained to Harvey. You know, because Cage did too. Cage once gave me an explanation of why he did it. And I was explaining to Harvey, Harvey says, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tell him, don't tell me that. <laughs> so, what are you going with? Uh, who has the best question? Come on. I do. Yeah. All right, there you go. I, <laughs> I hope I do. So, I read that Dad was finished was one of Mark's court says he's favorite no, I don't, I don't find that hard to believe we're getting it. <laughs> I mean, he liked the movie. I mean, he's a fan, yeah. But um, I want to know, what are some of your favorite movies of the 90s? Of the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's like, it's, it's hard to answer. So, the first off, top of your head. Top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't look at movies like, you know, I'm not like a critic, you know, I'm not like looking at these things like, and then a movie I might think was great when I saw it, I hate now, <laughs> you, you know, or something I didn't get then, I, I'm like, wow, look at that now, you know what I'm saying, so, I don't know, what am I going to say from the, from the 90s, I don't know, from, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> <laughs> Fight Club was my favorite movie in the 90s. What is? Fight Club. Fight Club. <laughs> 99. <laughs> <laughs> About Pulp Fiction. You know, those are two different collaborations. <laughs> you know, you're talking about Zoe, you know, showing, seeing this 45 the other day, right? And now you saw it here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. You know. So you want to talk about a poster for drug addiction? You know, you had a brilliant. You saw her in this 45. She was brilliant. She never touched a drug. She never touched alcohol. She was, you know, 17, and she had it all going on. She could write. She could sing. She could play music. And she was a genius. She was a genius, bro. That chick was a genius. 
okay, and she could do it. And then she fell down the rabbit hole of the delusion that heroin was the elixir of life. You know what I mean? I mean, she really went all the way with it, which is very strange. Somebody so smart. You see, she never backed off of that premise. And you saw it. And she was dead three years later. You know what I mean? So, you know, the collaboration with her was, was spectacular. You know, she's like five steps ahead of you. Brilliant. Everything out of her mouth is brilliant. Could type like, and I mean, I'm working on a script like six months later. I got 20 pages. I mean, this chick types 20 pages just warming up. Okay, she types scripts like a legal pen. Like, you know, we, we type like, you know, double space, giant type, you know. <laughs> okay, this is from, she gives you a page of her stuff. It's from the top to the bottom. I mean, the, the printers used to bitch to me like, you know, it's all this print we're going through printing these scripts. You know what I mean? It was like border to border, top to bottom, legal. You know, she could write, she wrote it out. She wrote she was like, spectacular, but you know. What's the deal? 39, she's dead. It's a fucking heartbreak for me. Oh, Kel. Yeah, he's a little pissed off. Kel shot the shit out of him. Ken Kel's the director of photography. What a job he did. You know, him and I started together, and then we had a falling out, and then I went into these kind of movies that you've seen. He's so keen on. Um, King of New York, body snatchers, you know, we're shooting, you know, different kind of style, and, and I had enough of it, and, you know, and we went back to the run and gun deal, you know, it's like, Kelsch is like, I mean, he was in Vietnam, I mean, really in Vietnam, the special forces, combat, like a year and a half, you know, two year, two year, who knows, he was there a long time, I mean, like, really there, he did fighting and getting shot at and shooting. Green Berets. Yeah, Green Beret. So he comes back. And, you know, for real, big tough guy is a sensitive dude. You know, he was in Jesuit, he was going to be a Jesuit. But, you know, you got to know him to, to get that side of him. But, um, but when you, you know, it's like cameramen, they frame actors, bro. This guy, like, takes a beat on him. <laughs> like, he's about to shoot him. You know what I mean? Like, so when you watch this whole film, he's shooting it. That camera's in his hands, bro. And when it's not in his hands, He's being pushed on a dolly by the guy I grew up with, Mac. Okay, so, you know, the, the whole deal of the, the camera is the actor, the motion of the camera, whether it's the guy pushing the dolly or the guy in the, with the camera in his hands, you know. And, um, I mean, believe me, in a film like this, there's no marks. There's no nothing. I mean, some of these things, we're just fucking flying. And it's only going to happen once. So you dig, and these guys know it, okay? And you can't make a fuck of it. You know, when he's doing that shit on the ground, you know, crying and screaming like, like homie, you better fucking get it. <laughs> like, oh, there's a, you know, there's a, a hair in the wind. Oh, <laughs> oh, I think they're like, what do you think they think? <laughs> it's like, hey, motherfucker, this, you know, we're not playing games here. And, you know, Kelsch is, he's, he's, he's at that, you know, He's where it's at. He knows what me. We shot this fucker. I mean, we shot 16 days. We threw three days out. Okay, so we shot this thing in less than two weeks. You know? How many takes of the Jersey Girl scene did you do? <laughs> <laughs> the Jersey Girl scene did, um, yeah, what that scene was, um, I'm writing a book, you know. Anyway, you know what I mean? If I don't get quoted on this, you know. Anyway, so we had um, Ed Sachs, he was going to do this. I got something to I mean, we had written it totally different. And originally, Chris Walken was going to play this for us. Oh, yeah, there's a good press in the story. So we, were gonna, we got the movie, we got the budget, Walken's playing it, we're at the Marmont. We're rehearsing, everything's great. And walking playing this role is a whole different movie. Show me your ass. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Okay, he's giving a special bonus. We're gonna take your ticket out of that. Everybody has a bonus. Okay, don't go tell two that Chelsea and the rocks. Go go tails. Go go tails and rock and roll, man. It's a good movie. Very soft and short. See that on the big screen. It's it's uh Bertolucci's DP, uh Willem's rock and uh Ozzy's on fire. It's just like Oh yeah, did anybody hear that? Ozzy's great. Um, Willem is it. It's, it's it's like one of our intentional comedies. <laughs> yeah. Not as funny as the other one, as the unintentional ones. <laughs> but we actually try to be funny. So that's as funny as the one you just saw. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what else is it? Oh yeah, and then Padre Pio. And Padre Pio's the, um, yeah, that's the big one. Yeah, and it's Thursday. There's going to be a bunch of trees here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys in robes. It's like Padre Pio. You know, Shia. Yes, Padre Pio wins a prize. Yeah. Shia will be here. Shia is going to be here doing the talking. And you don't want to miss that. Trust me. Uh -huh. right. So, um... We got another film to uh, introduce you in a bit, should we? Is this the same group? Are you getting... Yeah, they're going to pause, go on a break, come back, we'll introduce Dangerous Game. Hey, charge double this. <laughs> double feature, they, they've already paid us. <laughs> Thank you.